Thursday. And this is one of the happiest and holiest days for our church at Christmas time. And on Mother's Day every year we set aside new babies and children that are new to our church uh, to dedicate them to the glory of God, which is already so obvious and revealed in them. This is a sacred commitment for all of us as well. It's not just that we have a nice picture moment up here, but it is that we are saying to these couples that we want to be a part of your larger family. We want to be your spiritual family. And we want you to know that it takes more than just two parents to raise a child spiritually. And we are saying to you, we want to be that for you. We care about you and long to see the glory of God continue to grow in these precious ones. So I want to invite, if you all will come up and squeeze in here, if you will, and then if you all have your bulletin and present. We want to read a litany of dedication. So I invite you to find that in your bulletin. And after that, I'll introduce and we'll have a word of blessing on them. Pictures are allowed, because <laughs> you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, so go right ahead. But I invite you, and I really, there's a place for just the parents to respond at the end. I hope all of you will prayerfully say the words that you, we are giving to these families, our gift to you. We long to be your extended family. So in that spirit, will you join me as we share together reading the litany of dedication? Lord, the future seems so uncertain, and yet we look at these children and mysteriously we have hope. Guide their way, Lord. Make their path straight and give them strength. As parents, spiritual leaders, teachers, mentors, and friends, grant us purpose to give them an overwhelming sense of security that can only come from you. When they are hurting, when they fail, when they are lonely, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. We gather to celebrate the wonderful plan God has for each person, for each of these children presented today. <laughs> thank you, God for the gift of these children. And we do thank God for the gift of these children. As I present these couples and babies and children, if you are a family member or a special relationship or any kind of connection at all, we invite you to stand as we introduce just that particular family. So we're glad to welcome neighbors of mine, Harrison and Danielle Vaughn, their beautiful older daughter, Reagan, and their brand new daughter who got in and out of the hospital so quick I couldn't catch up with her. Uh, and this is Cora. This is Cora Vaughn and the parents, Harrison and Danielle Vaughn. Harrison and Danielle, beautiful daughters. I have two daughters, they're nothing like it. And, uh, and I celebrate the beauty of God's handiwork, the creative power that he shows so fully in Reagan and Cora. So we celebrate God's gift to you, we give you that. This is Kevin and Kimberly Moore, who are newer to our community. And this is Chanel, beautiful. We love you. We celebrate God's obvious design for you and how precious you are. Kimberly and Kevin, we celebrate. They have several other children. This is the third one. And uh, all of them, two older brothers. And uh, now Chanel has come to give them the blessings of a daughter. And she is certainly the gift from God. And we celebrate that and give this to you, Kevin and Kimberly Moore. John and Emily Schweitzer, and this is, uh, well, Grace and Grayson didn't make it. Okay, Grace is right there. Okay, and this is Aubrey Schweitzer, who is a fourth generation member of our church and the Faircloths out there and the Schweitzers and all, but, but she is precious and beautiful. And John and Emily, we celebrate the gift of God that 
Aubrey is for each of you. And just see her reminded of how great God is. How beautiful. Hi, darling. <laughs> She's so pretty. There you go. Then we got Tyler and Leanna Sauls. I was the very first one to visit when Leanna was born. born and Layla was born, to get that right. And by the way, this is the third generation now through, through the McLemore family. And Leanna here was dedicated 26 years ago in this church. So now the blessings just keep on coming. And we love this family and celebrate that God has given you such a special gift. She's just looking so good. I do this to children. And I especially do this to adults. Uh, uh, but uh, she is sleeping well. So we celebrate Layla. Kevin and Jessica Gray, again, what a gift for Lila Kate. And beautiful, and we celebrate. There are two of our newest members here and have given us the gift of this beautiful, beautiful daughter. So Lila Kate, we celebrate you and the beauty and the glory of God that's so obvious in you. Hi there. Yeah, we celebrate Kevin and Jessica. God bless you as your joy parents. So, wonderful gifts. Aren't these reminders that God is a great God? And His creative work is just unbelievable. It's always a miracle for me to see the beauty of what God has given each of you. And so we are glad to, that we can be family to you. We celebrate that. I want to say two words of blessing, one in Old Testament, one in New Testament. The Old Testament blessing Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will make straight your path. And then a really special word, which is nothing but the gospel truth for each of these children. You are the salt of the earth. You really are the light of the world. So let your light so shine as you grow that all may see the glory of the Father and give praise to Him. Then will you join me as we pray a prayer of blessing upon these families? Gracious God, your handiwork is just remarkable. You have given these families each a gift that is divine and holy and special. We thank you that we have been given the gift of being extended family to them and pray that we can be faithful to all the nurturing and all the raising of them that one day they will know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so we dedicate them to your promise we dedicate them to your purpose. We dedicate them to your calling. We dedicate them that they may grow to be the best version of themselves and that your handiwork may continue to shine through them in every way. Bless these parents with reward and with joy. And may they be faithful in raising their children in Christian homes. And all this is our praise to you. And we just pray that all your heavenly blessings will rest upon these families. For your name we pray. Amen. Hey, it's good all over here closer. Well, hello, how are you? Hey, sweetie, what just happened? And you guys got the front row seat. What just happened here? You saw babies. What was going on with those babies? What does that mean they were being dedicated? That's exactly right. Ben said they were dedicated to serve God. Guys, what you just saw were mommies and daddies who had the best blessing in their baby or their young child. Reagan was a young child. And they, as mommies and daddies, have decided, I am going to give my child to God. Because we all are whose children? We're all a child of God. That's exactly right. But these mommies and daddies, they stood up here in front of the church family and they said, I promise to do my best to raise this baby, to love God with all of his heart, all of his mind and his soul. And you know what the, these, this church family did? They made a promise. They made a promise to also to help raise those babies. That means they made a promise to be Sunday school teachers and shared care workers and BBS workers and work with you guys on Wednesday nights. Because you know what? It takes a community to raise a baby and to raise children. And you're in the best community of all. Where are you right now? Church. And you're in a church community. So boys and girls, you've got the front row seat of watching a precious baby being dedicated to God. Were you guys dedicated? You are. Cool. Cool.
cool. And you know what? Every Sunday, let me ask you a question, since you were dedicated babies. Um, when you wake up, and, and be honest, now is the time for honesty. When your mommy wakes you up or your daddy wakes you up on Sunday morning, or your sister, on Sunday morning and says, wake up, it's time to go to church. Have you ever looked at that mama or daddy and said, I don't want to go, not today. Do I have to go today? That's what I say. You do? Thank you for being honest. <laughs> do you? You do? That's so cool. You never, ever, ever say that? You do? Wow, some of you guys are lucky mamas and daddies. Because you know what? My son, he's 16 years old, and he still asks me that question every Saturday night. Can I skip church tomorrow? And every Saturday night, what do I say? No. no. You know why? Because what your mommies, when your mommy makes you get up and come to church, they are saying, they are giving you the best gift of all. They are saying, I love you, because they have chosen to raise you in church, to make you a part of a church family and that church family and them help you to know and grow and know how much God loves you. So the next Sunday when it's time to get up and go to church, get up and come to church and take that as your mama and daddy saying, I love you. Because that is. And by the way, did you wish your mama a happy Mother's Day today? Okay, good. All right. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, Dear God thank you for our moms. Thank you for our dads. And their love for us. And, love for us. and for our church family. And for, our church family. And for the dedication of those that love us and help us to know you better. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Our scripture reading is found in the second chapter of Luke. It is the only account we find of Jesus' life between his birth and the age of 30. He's 12 years old. He's made his way to church with his parents. And I want to invite all of you to hear this. It is certainly a message this morning, primarily for parents on this Mother's Day. But if you listen real closely, I hope you'll understand it's a message for all of us. So I invite you, you turn to your Bibles if you have them, beginning with verse 41 of Luke 2. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in the company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated me like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Someone once came upon Michelangelo chipping away with a chisel at a huge shapeless piece of rock. They asked him what he was up to. He said, I'm trying to release the angel in prison in this marble. Here on this Mother's Day where we have just celebrated the beauty of these families, the awesome task that parenting involves, it would seem to me that maybe the task of parenting is much the same. That somehow we are to release the best versions of our child that they might find its fullest expression. 
But how do we do that? How do we give gifts to our children that reflect the gifts that God gave to us? And I would just say from a lot of experience of having done it wrong as much as right, of everything that I've read, everything that seems true to me, I would suggest this morning, and it's an awesome task, but to try to pull off this balancing act with your children of giving them two gifts, the gifts of acceptance and the gifts of challenge. Now the gifts of acceptance, hopefully nobody's going to reject their children. Although if there are some teenager, parents of teenagers in the room, they have given it thought. Amen. Thank you. But what I'm talking about is something much deeper than that. I'm talking about that your child gets the constant and unconditional message that you celebrate them for their very existence. You know, all the child development studies show that our children, when they first come out of their mother's womb, they are immediately thinking and dealing with certain issues. And ultimately, you shake it all down. They're wondering, is this world one that can be trusted or not? It's fascinating to me, all the studies support it. Before they can even walk, they're already asking questions. Will I be cared for? Will I be welcome or resented? Am I a delight or am I a burden? All this going on in those tiny little babies that we just saw here this morning. Myron Madden says that the, nothing shapes a child more than to have someone sparkle on you. That is, when your child walks in the room, that they see the twinkle in your eye that just delights who they are and that they are and all that they are. So the first and the last gift maybe we give our children best of all is simply delight, that you delight in them. I like what Gordon Cosby says, the first and foremost responsibility of parents is to enjoy their children, to enjoy them. Sam Keene talks about this in relation to his own father. He was visiting his father out west. He flew out west, his father was dying. And one afternoon they found themselves all alone in the hospital room. And Sam Keene said these words to his father. I don't know how you feel about everything you have done in your life, but I want you to know that as a parent, I think you have been a huge success. As far back as I can remember, you never, let one, you never once let any of us children down at a critical juncture of our lives. And what is more, you did the fi one finest single thing a parent could do for his child. Namely, you took delight in us. You always made, you made us feel that you were glad that we were born. You were delighted that we were, that you were delighted that we came into the world. And for that one gift, I shall forever be in debt. Sam, I think is right here. What your child needs more than anything is that he or she is accepted and that you take just sheer delight in your child. But as critical as that is, acceptance is not all that they need. And this is where it comes in for all of us right now. Our children also need the gift of challenge and we as a church have just said that we're going to dedicate ourselves to being the larger family. All of us are shapers of these little ones and the children of our church. And that we see them in an honest kind of way that they are not just flesh and blood. They are spirit. They are soul. They are children created in the image of God. And so the gift of challenge we give them is to identify them for the very best that they are, the very truest that they are. And because that is who they are, there is something divine in them that we are challenged to challenge them to live up to that very identity. John Claypool calls this giving a child a Christmas tree spirit, which is where we point out all the packages in a child's nature and personality. And then we help that child unwrap those gifts for the betterment of the world around them. And back in the early 20th century, Albert Schweitzer, famous now to so many, 
He gave up his profession, stunned all his colleagues, and decided in mid-career to just give it all up and go to medical school with the idea of becoming a missionary in Africa. When asked why he would do such a thing, he said, well, the Western civilization has given me so much that it just would be wrong for me not to give something back. And so began one of the great lives of the 20th century. As much as our children need a sense of acceptance, they just as much need a sense of challenge. Think of what it would, difference it would make if every one of these children that we just dedicated this morning, as they grow in the life of this church, that this church just said to them in loud and clear terms, you are a child of God. That we become a mirror to these children, saying this is how Jesus sees you right now. This is the way Jesus sees you. And that we identify the gifts and the calling that every person has. What a difference it would make for our children growing up. So there's the challenge, the challenge for everybody in this room who has influence over any child anywhere, to give them the gifts of not only acceptance, but to give them the gift of challenge. And I think we see this in our text here this morning. Jesus is 12 years old. He's made his way to church on the Sabbath. It's interesting that the verse said here, as was his custom. Wouldn't it be great for children to be able to say, yeah, I, you can count on me where I'll be on Sunday morning. That's our family custom. We had a young lady in our church, in our early service make her profession of faith. It was the custom in her family to be here every Lord's day. But he was there in the temple. And that's when things start getting interesting here. He's in the temple and so one day, well, it's, you know, kids run around, they get lost. But yeah, there's something that doesn't sound very good about Mary and Joseph here. Three days, they finally decide, well, our child is lost. Maybe we ought to check and see whether, where he is. Three days. I mean, most of us go three hours and we'd be worried if our child is lost. Three days, and then they finally say, oh, I guess we ought to check and see where he is. Yeah, these kind of things do happen on a smaller scale. Yeah, Kathy and I were talking yesterday when our little daughter Paige, just, just an infant, had one of those Sundays when Kathy came home, then I came home a little bit later, and we had that look in each other's eyes. I thought you were bringing Paige home. I thought you were bringing Paige home. And so we have to go back to church about 1230 with our heads between our legs, and that faithful nursery worker is still standing there. Here's your child that you forgot all about. You know, I mean, we've had this happen in this church. But it doesn't take three days. And so finally they come across their child. And you can just sense what's going on with Mary. Same with some of you parents when you've lost your child. On the one hand, total relief that now you've found him or her. On the other hand, you want to strangle her for causing such worry in your life. And so Jesus, of course, Jesus would say these things. Well, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? I mean, isn't that just like Jesus to say something like that? And you can just feel the mother's tension going on here. You've done this. On the one hand, she wants to protect her child. He's not even a teenager yet. On the other hand, she doesn't want to do anything to get in the way of what Jesus' calling and true identity is. And it seems to me this is the kind of thing that goes on a lifetime. I have two daughters, 29 and 25. I still find that struggle sometimes. I want to just take care of them and protect them, and want, but not want to get in the way of what their highest calling is. So we all see what happens when a child gets nothing but acceptance and no challenge. Yeah, you know, we read all the time what's going on with children these days. Seems in this community, I'm sure it doesn't happen in this church, but I see some friends on Facebook, I swear if their children sneeze, they think it's worthy of being on Facebook. Every child is a celebrity these days. If they come in fourth place in the tournament, they get a trophy like they won the thing. Nobody can be a failure anymore. Heaven forbid if our child is seen as losing in some competition. Everybody's gotta come out 
on top is what happens to these helicopter parents now have become the, the way to go because there's such pressure in this community that your child be just as good as everybody else's child, which means it's not enough to be in one activity. You got to be good at several activities. Acceptance, but very little challenge. Dr. Paul Turnier has pointed out that ironically, this helicopter parent kind of thing, this hovering parent, they end up ironically doing the very thing that they least were hoping to do. And that is to bring harm to their child. Children who are pampered, children who are overly protected, they go out into the world defenseless. How many times have I had parents of college freshmen come to me and said, I can't believe what he or she is doing. We never let that kind of thing be acceptable in our home. And that was just the point. They never got to do anything. And so now they're doing everything. Mike Queen, who is pastor of First Baptist Wilmington, he talked about in a sermon one time that when his two children became high school seniors, by the way, high, the youth are going to love this, especially the, so many of them in the early service. Mike Queen says to his high school seniors, no curfew anymore. Now I want to know where you are, I want to know what time you come home, but no more curfew. He said he got a lot of flack from parents. You probably, I'm probably going to hear it myself here, so just, just forget about it. I know what I'm saying. Um, I, I'm just quoting Mike Queen. I, of course, never would have done this. Uh, but Mike, Mike Queen did this, got a lot of flack. He said, but listen, my children in a year from now are going to be in college and nobody's going to be telling them how to get by, get by and how to handle the temptations. I want them to start learning how to deal with life while we still have some influence in it. Acceptance without challenge is like smothering without mothering. The child loses instead of gains. But by the same token, challenge without acceptance can hurt a child just as much. All too often our children and I did this with my children. It's, it's one of the things I regret more than any one thing. And so often I would send the message that my acceptance was a conditional kind of acceptance based on how well they did or how well they didn't do. And this kind of message, some of the hardest, some of the deepest wounds that I hear as a pastor are from full grown adults who never did get the blessing of their parents. They grew up, they made grades like I never could have made, but yet it was never quite enough of a scholastic record. Or they made decisions that wasn't what the parents thought was appropriate. Or they, their appearance never matched up to the parents' dreams for their appearance. And the bottom line is it all down. Their life was simply never enough is the way they felt to earn and be able to get the love and the acceptance of their parents and some of them going to their grave still wondering why they never could get be enough to get the acceptance of their parents. Parents, how does your child see you? Is 90% of your role one where you're always expecting something of them? Yeah, I sometimes want to say, let them mess up. Because when they get older, like we, we all do mess up as adults. It's a good thing that they can start learning how to deal with messing up. How to learn with failure, which is all going to be our experience. How are they going to know that, ever get that experience if they don't get it at an early age? But most importantly, don't ever, ever let your children feel like their acceptance by you is based on their performance. What a terrible message to send to a child. Sometimes when a child is asked, what are you going to be when you grow up? I wish they would just say, I'm not going to be anything. I already am. Just let it be. So I just want to say, I think it's one of the toughest jobs in the world is to be a parent. And one of the best jobs in the world is to be a parent. Yeah, I'm in a season of prayer for a lot of, for the, really the whole church here. And I've had dozens and dozens of emails. People have sent me prayer concerns. I've learned a lot that I didn't know. But almost to the person, those who had children, 
They would say to me, Pastor, if you're going to pray for me, I hope you'll pray that you'll help me be a better parent. Because it's a struggle. It's a hard thing. I didn't do it near as well as I wish I should have. But I love my girls. We love our children. But acceptance without challenge smothers a child. But challenge without acceptance can tend to crush a child. And this is, you haven't already gotten the message, this is where everybody comes in here. I just want all of you to know what I have struggled to know and trust and believe in my gut for decades now. Please, all of you know, your acceptance of God, by God, has never been about your performance. You can't do anything to get God to love you more. You can't get, do anything to get God to love you less. The gifts God gives all of us are gifts of remarkable acceptance. But he doesn't leave it there. He, has a, he gives us a challenge. You are a child of God. You all have unique spiritual gifts. That's biblical. And you are to be something more than you ever could be left to yourself. There's a calling that God has placed upon every one of you. But when it comes to your children, just sparkle on them. Delight in them, enjoy them, but also challenge them. And I understand it's a balancing act. It just never ends. But in our scripture text this morning, it says, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So may it be for all our children as well. Our hymn of invitation this morning, hymn number 685, Children Are a Gift from Heaven. It's a wonderful hymn. Again, we had a young lady make her profession of faith in our early service, had a couple join upon transfer of membership in the early service. Maybe in this time, God is leading somebody here to respond with your profession of faith or unite with this church or another church family or some renewed commitment. I'll be in the front to receive you. Let us stand and sing to the glory of God, hymn number 685. Danny and Andrea Baker blessed us this past year by becoming a part of our church family. And this morning, their daughter, Megan, comes to make her profession of faith, accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. This is our highest celebration. What a Mother's Day gift uh, to know that you're a part of now of Jesus' family and our church family here. We, Megan, we see the love of God in you right now. We celebrate that you've given your life to Christ, and we look forward to your day of baptism. Okay. So Megan Baker was so happy. You had Lady Tedder in the early service make her professor of faith. And we're celebrating on this day the children of God becoming the followers of Jesus Christ. All of you who rejoice in this decision, watch this. Let it be known, but uplifted hand, our sign of celebration and welcome and delight. And I want to say very clearly, this is our highest celebration. All you God's people, you should be coming up here and welcoming your newest sister in Christ, not going first out the door. So I'm going to trust you. Come up and welcome our newest family member, Megan Baker. So please. If you are a guest here today, we delight that you have added to our company. We have a guest reception room over to side. Mike Dishman from our outreach team would love to meet with you and just share any information or just get to know you better. We're so thankful that you've added to our family. We celebrate again these babies and these children that have been dedicated and we love the families and look forward to being your extended family. Saturday is Stop Hunger Now. Such a great opportunity. It's such a fun opportunity. Come out and be a part of making a difference for hunger in our world. And I just want to say next Sunday, I've been here a long time. I've rarely have seen the choir 
feel so special about something that they have worked hard on and been spiritually nurtured by the Psalm 23. We've been given little gifts of it every week. And next week is going to be a, a usually special worship opportunity. Wonderful time to invite others as well. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. So come up and welcome Macon. And happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. Let us bow for the benediction and the response to follow. Christ before you, Christ behind you, Christ within you. Grace upon grace, mercy upon mercy, love all love. Jesus Christ our Lord, thanks be to God.